Whit and Amanda Briard had owned the lacquer plant in New York Mills for about 10 years when it was destroyed by fire on July 18, 2010. Almost three years later, we checked in to see how they're doing. Yeah, we bought it in, uh, was it 2000? The year 2000, yep. And uh, I was 19, you were 18? Mm -hmm. We were both from Frazee. Not too far away, 25, yeah, 30 miles far. away. So. At, the old, at the old place across the street from where we are now, it was 10 years. We had just celebrated our anniversary in June. Fire happened the end of July, July 18th. So we had been there already 10 years before that happened. Well, the building was built in 1946 the building, and it was a co-op up until, I believe, uh, about the mid-80s. And then a private guy bought it, and he run it for 18 years, and we bought it from him. Sunday night, we had her mom and dad over for supper, and we were on the back deck grilling. One of my cleaning boys called me up, what when your locker plant's on fire, the fire department's there. So me and my father-in-law jumped in my truck, and it was a 10-minute drive in here, and by the time we got here, firefighters are blowing water on it and trying to get it out. So. I still don't like thinking about it. Helpless feeling. Sure. As, as the fire was happening, it was kind of, you know, you, you don't really think that it's real at first. But I, the biggest part that I remember was the next morning when we came in and everything is just a big pile of rubble. It was, that was the sad part. <clears throat> we stayed there till about midnight, one o'clock that night. They were still trying to put it out. Went home and was back in here at five in the morning and there were fire trucks were just leaving at that time. Nothing was for certain, but they thought that it was a lightning storm that had come through Saturday night and it was a real bad one. And I had a steel roof on it and they said that the insulation can sit and smolder for days before it lights up, so. And how is the community as far as supporting you? Absolutely never dreamt it would have been like it was. No, they were all there. Well, that next morning I was standing there looking, and I mean, the town was pretty dead yet at that time, but 7 o'clock, 7.30, my banker, Albert, who showed up, pulled up, he had heard about it on radio or something, and he comes over and said that it's a sad deal. He tapped me on the back and said, uh, when the smoke clears, come down, we'll uh, get to rebuilt. But it didn't take long that next day. You know, we started planning. The, Went and talked to the insurance company, see what I had to work with, and went and talked to the bank, and within a day or two, we were bound and determined to rebuild in this town. So. Yeah, it was crazy how fast everything happened after that. It was, you know, everybody directed us each step of the way. We would have never done it on our own, known what to do, and and just had the courage to do it. So it was definitely a, a blessing. To have them. I mean, once you got by building this, I mean, we got by everything and was set in this thing, it was the best thing that ever happened. Today, Mills Locker Plant is in a much larger facility just across the street from the original location. It appears they are pretty busy, too. The biggest change probably is our retail. Obviously, our um, area is probably twice or three times the size, even maybe just the retail alone. That's really grown. and. People come from all over to stop in, and we actually have tourists. I, I didn't realize we had tourists in New York Mill, so that's exciting. And, and we actually didn't get the retail part going at as quick as the back part, so we took our time and made it homey the way we wanted it to be, and which was really fun. And we keep coming up with more and more products to offer, and and that makes it fun. And it's it's really been going over well. I would say probably one of our number one sellers is probably our bacon. Everybody knows about our bacon. We ship it all over the place. And then our long list of brat coming up with some crazy ones. Like a blueberry or mushroom Swiss brat, jalapeno cheddar. We make a gummy worm brat. People drive for miles to, I mean, they hear about someone had it and they got to come try it. So.
Most of the guys that we have working in the back helping us have been with us since day one, just as long as we've been working here. So they, they know, you know, absolutely what they're doing and they take pride in it, they really do. So they do a good job. And most of them have been in the community for I mean, 30, 40, 50 years. So they know the customers even better than I do. Uh, four full-time employees in the four or five months in the fall time, we hire another four more on. So, And I mean, they come back year after year after year. And then as far as the custom uh, slaughtering of hogs and beef, that's kind of getting to be a big thing with uh, all the health issues out there. People want to know where their meat's coming from. I've got certain farmers, you know, that I can get Angus from or Hereford or Jersey or whatever they want. They know it's farm raised. It's not been shipped all over the country. Yeah, deer season typically we'll do between three and 500 carcass deer during the deer season that uh, bow hunters, rifle hunters, muzzle loaders will bring in. Um, it's super convenient for them. I mean, they can they drop it off here, they go back to their buddies and to their deer camp and have fun. So that's that's our really busy season. I mean, it's day and night, 24 hours a day for a couple weeks. There's never a week that goes by that we don't make venison sausage. Mills Locker Plant really specializes in sausage making, and special orders are not a problem. This particular sausage is a jalapeno cheddar sausage that he's making. The jalapenos are kind of a, a hot item, but the cheddar cheese you add kind of mellows it out, so it's a perfect blend, and just about everybody likes them. And it's not a real spicy, I mean, we make a hot brat and a buffalo wing brat, them are the hot ones. This is just a all around good brat. Boy, we make a, a bologna. Um, we make a summer sausage, a jalapeno summer sausage, pepper jack summer sausage. Um, but you can make just about anything. Cranapple or, or cranberry summer sausage, blueberry summer sausage. We'll do absolutely anything the customer wants. I mean, all beef, all pork. Um, we do some gluten-free product. Oh, that's a big deal. Like, that's like, a like, what would be a, a gluten-free sausage? Yeah, they would just mention it, and we would keep that part of the seasoning out. So. Okay. Yep. This is a big improvement from the old locker plant. The other one was just uh, block, the old-fashioned smoke houses. And uh, each of these are $37,000 to $40,000 a piece, but it pumps humidity into the smokehouse so your sausage stays juicier. You we'll use a wooden pellet for smoke, and after that it cooks it. Everything that goes through here is fully cooked, so all you have to do when you get it home is just heat it up. State inspected, yep, but it's a minimum of four times a year usually six to eight times a year. You have to keep a heat record of what temp you got each batch up to, and this monitors it all, so they can come in at any time, look at what temp this batch got up to, and at what time, how long it got there. Microprocessor and a recording graph chart. This is the temperature probe to stick in and get the internal temperature of whatever you're smoking. If it's ham, bacon, sausage, and it comes up on the graph and re records it here. At any time, I can walk over and see what the internal temp is as it's smoking or heating. These hams just come out of the smokehouse this morning. They're fully cooked when they come out of there. A lot of people call this for you know a split quarter of a beef, so they get half of a front, half of a behind. They get a variety of all the different states. Yeah, there's a lot of people like, that don't realize the options. And you go down the list with us and we try to make it as easy on the customer as possible. They get a little bit of everything and you get it packed the way you want it to be packed. What do you keep the temperature at in here? 10 below in here. It feels colder in here than it is outside today. Oh, Absolutely. I'm sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's the wind chill. I mean, it's, oh, it's a, wind chill too, right? a flash freezes. I mean, you want it frozen within the first uh, 12 hours. Everything was butcher paper, white wrap. The two weeks ago we switched, everything is all vacuum packed. Don't last twice as long. Six months on white wrap, they say 12 months on vacuum packed. We're, we're so fortunate here in New York Mills area to have Amanda and Whitman here running this wonderful establishment. Uh, they provide a very, very needed service for everybody in the area. And they do a good job. Now that you're open in this facility, do you miss it? No. <laughs> no, it, I mean, this is much better, much easier. There's no steps in this place. Everything's built uh, you know, the way we have always wanted. So, and it, it shows with the customers. They love it.
we'd never really choose a disaster, but sometimes God uses those things to open new doors Absolutely. for us. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the way we looked at it in the end.